17. Got episode 10 for you today with Josh Smith. Really looking forward to this one. This dude's an interesting character. I'm sure he's going to enlighten me in several different ways. Hopefully you too. Catch you then. <laughs> How we going, people? Here we are. I'm with Josh Smith today. Bro. Nice to be here. I'll give you a handshake, so mate. So good, so good. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me in your household. Beautiful mate. room you got going here. Welcome to the office, bro. I love this. Oh, heritage. <laughs> yeah, I love these as well, bro. Yeah, man, that's a symbol that's real close to my heart, and my friend made those from a... The, the wings? Yeah, man. It's like what have we got? What type of feathers are they? Um, I think it's a uh, duck. Duck feathers, you know? Could be wrong. I'm not very good with feathers, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not a big feather, man? They're pretty. They're beautiful. Maybe eagle? I don't know. Who knows, man? Yeah, floating, floating. Do you want to just give us a little introduction to who the hell people are listening to today? Right. So there's a few roles that I take on around the place at this point. So, like, I've been at uni for, like, seven years now. So I've been in Dunedin for a while, mm -hmm. like, putting down networks and, like, making friends and making roots. And, like, so I'm involved with the, like, Fire and Circus Club would be, like, my predominant kind of, like, first, this is the thing that I love, you know, yeah. so much. And then, like, through that, everything else kind of came about. So, like, I'm involved with OUSA now. Yeah. And, like bringing like vibes to like people on the streets you know just like you know partying with people is so important yeah you know it's like how people party changes people's lives it's good it's like partying is a big part of my life recreation you know um and then yeah man i'm involved now in like teaching fire spinning in local schools and stuff as well and then like yeah bro doing lots of work with the council and just like getting amongst bros my um working towards my second degree so i've got a bachelor's in science and psychology okay and cool. i'm going to get like a bachelor's of arts in sociology nice bro i want to do postgrad in like an analysis of like the student and youth culture in Dunedin. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm. What do you think of your psychology degree? I think that it, it gave me a really strong structure. Yeah. You know, it gives you a really powerful way of analyzing data and looking at paradigms. Yep. But like within academia, you know, that's kind of led to um, cloistering or like there's popular ideas, you know, that people don't want to step outside of. Okay. So that's kind of. Like you said, it's provided a structure for you. Mm -hmm. And now you're kind of challenging those structures a bit? Well, like utilizing those structures to analyze other things that yep. people aren't looking at yet, you know? Yeah. yeah. Cool, bro. And uh, sociology, what year are you doing? In this, this is my third year paper level. Yeah, okay. Man. So yeah. like straight into the lovely like, you know, analysis of the self in the postmodern society. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing a couple like um, Crim 201, like criminal justice and... Are you doing full time study for that? Yeah, bro. Straight this year is gonna be so hectic. Yeah, you're gonna uh, be a busy man. man. It's so good, back to back, all day, every day, and like I teach yoga as well. It's a big yeah. part of my life. Um, and like we just got permission from the uni to use Union Hall for heaps of stuff. Ah, oh, so cool, I'm gonna bro. be throwing like alcohol free parties, like breathalyzers uh -huh. on the door, yeah, creating safe space for people to, like boogie and come along like sober or tripping or pinging, you know, just like to get amongst without the alcohol buzz. Yeah, and see what a difference that makes. Because so, you don't drink alcohol, right? Yeah, bro. Since March last year, hey, I quit. On St. Paddy's Day, or the day after St. Paddy's Day. Yeah. Yeah, man. Big night, was it? It was a big night, but also <laughs> I saw, I, you know, for everybody, right? So I saw a lot of pain, man, you know, and a lot of, you know, the consequences of that, that yeah, so, shit. So what was, the, what was the leading force that drove you away from alcohol? Well, I've always known that it was going to happen. Same with smoking cigarettes. Back when I smoked cigarettes, I always knew that this is just a momentary thing. Okay. It's like a crutch, you know, I've got to use it to get past. How many people do you think think like that, though? And then it just gets a hold of them. Bro, it's been real cool because you mean in terms of giving up alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. It's or been, cigarettes. Bro, it's been so good because like, you know, in the last, because like, because now that I talk about it and like people know that it can be done, you know, like real strong and I'm still like interacting and like, you know, even more than I was when I was yeah. drinking and smoking. Still functioning and More involved, bro. More energy and shit. Exactly. Like it's about that shared context. So that's why yeah. people drink because they need that shared, like when you got oh, your yeah, beer, right. it's like a little shield, you know, you've got me got your thing to do you know um but now i'm just like interacting with people and then yeah. you have to interact you know so you build stronger bonds that aren't just based on like forgetting all your memories and falling over and doing stuff. totally bro because i feel like that is pretty much the main purpose purpose of alcohol people use it to step outside their comfort zone a bit more and mm. express themselves and connect yeah, yeah yeah and then like you say like it's a momentary it's a change of state rather than a change of trait kind of hard and it's like what i want to do with alcohol free parties and shit is like take those vibes because the vibes are still there the people are still beautiful oh, yeah. they're still going to connect 
and then like put it into a container where mm-hmm. people can interact. Yeah. That's not dependent upon alcohol. And it, like, I think it'll change it heaps, you know, because people will be able to make cool. stronger cool. bonds, you know? It's a beautiful idea. It's, it's, it's very optimistic. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I People to, definitely love alcohol. Mm, they love interacting through alcohol and yeah. like it can be fun. I remember that shit. It can be super fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, I used to get so raw, but also there's other ways yeah. and it fucking oh, yeah. des- destroys some people as well. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, like I used yeah, to be, that's the thing. Very I used dangerous. to be that guy, you know, that would get so rolled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah, but I used to be there like four times a week. Yeah, you know, okay. Well, out of then, it. Well, that's, that's a very positive move for you in your life. Mate, tell say. me about it. Like, because I grew up in Asia, man. I grew up in Cambodia. Cambodia? There's a lot of pain over there, you know? It's a crazy-ass country. There's all these, like, psychic wounds like, and physical wounds, like, just there. So, like, I got wasted all the time, bro. As a young kid, right? Like, 7 to 19. So Real. I was in Cambodia for 12 years. Seven. And, like, growing up over there, bro, and people with, like, no arms and, like, no legs, and they're, like, wheeling themselves around on a little thing with... This is, like, crazy, bro. Like, it's kids, world, bro. holes in their stomachs, like, begging for food on the street and shit. And it's, like, barbed <sighs> wire on every fence and spike jacket. You've been back there recently? AKs and shit. Um, I went back four years ago to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Like, get closure. My dad was moving out of the family home, so we sorted through all our shit. And I said goodbye. And, yeah, and I went back, and it changed so much. I had no connection, because all the Chinese, right. Chinese money came in, and the whole city's just, like... And all my friends left because it's Cambodia. We're right. all international kids. So now I've got like, you know, 800 friends all over the world now. Like some of them are like heads of, you know, their, their dads are the heads of police or the ambassador for the EU. Like tripping because when there's not that many foreigners, everyone's like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so when I was there, I drank heaps, bro. It's like $3 for a bottle of vodka at a, at a 24-hour store with no ID. Wow. So at 14, bro, I go to my mom and be like, could I have $5 for lunch, please? And just go like get a bottle of vodka and just nick it in one go. Jeez. And that's me for the day, you know, like three days of that a week for like four years. Mm, there, no, that P- can't be put good. my neurons through the through the fire, eh? Like, Ooh, yeah, like, you're testing strong. your brain there. You're testing and your kidney, you're testing your livers. Yeah, bro. Jeez. Like purify me in the, <laughs> in the, the, bath, the bath of ethanol. Oh, well, it's good to hear. Um, mm. And so now I feel like because I've been that deep, I can step back and be like, yo, there's another, <laughs> there's another way. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I man. don't know if I could personally ever step... Um, completely out of the alcohol scene eh? hmm. i'm quite a quite a fan hmm. but i definitely uh i like stepping back from it for periods of time mm. and just like kind of cleansing the system a little bit bro and it's like you know when you get like more on like the mdma buzz mm-hmm. and everyone's just like bouncing you know those parties when there's like a big wave comes through everyone's just yeah. like you know like <laughs> it's so good bro imagine if that was the predominant buzz and everyone's just like frothing you know yeah like fizzing i suppose um it's weird how there's like a so such a what would you say social acceptance around alcohol as well just because of legal aspects and tradition like culture it's been around for yeah you know, yeah so that long. as well and I it's mean, like normal it's you massive know. thing like twenty firsts for me are terrifying you've got this you know beautiful young human who's just coming into brain development right their frontal lobes and shit mm-hmm. and like they're just getting ready to step out you know and then they have like twenty one shots of this addictive neurotoxin mm. that just you know like wreaks havoc neuronally it like strips the totally myelin bro. off your neuron sheaths so it literally like kind of solventizes your brain solventizes yeah because alcohol is a solvent um and it wow. strips the conductor off the or the insulator off the wires in your brain basically is that right Hard do out. you think that's probably like the worst like physiological effect of alcohol or? there's so many and they compound so it's hard to say um, and it's going to react differently with each individual right as well hard and that's why you get some people who just like go off the rails you know so in um if you had uh had control of the drug laws yes is alcohol legal in your head it's legal but it's more controlled okay um so what, like what are you thinking well ideally for me we would have like public psychological screenings for every citizen we okay. create a huge national industry that could be subsidized through like psychological screening um or even like when when the ai gets better you know you could have like, yeah. an, like an update or like an app that keeps track of your state of mind okay keeps track yeah. of your bodily rhythms so people that are prone to depression or like you know like um psych- psychological breaks yeah would maybe not be able to access it without going get, and getting help first okay or having yeah. a system in place as opposed to like you know suddenly you've had a kid and you're in a low socioeconomic area and then you're spending heaps of money on alcohol because your life is real painful you know what i mean like there's people in certain situations that shouldn't have access to things and that goes for all drugs though because now you're talking about an organized system so like i'd love to see a a state where there's so for you you're thinking um 
Do you think all drugs should be legal? Yeah, because otherwise it's the gangs that push it, G. <laughs> like, it's not, they're still there, you know. You think but, it should be controlled by the, a government rather than a, a gang? That's a whole discussion, but a, a structure. Okay. Something, you know, like, so we can suss it out. And then, like, I don't know, just, it, it, I think it would be really different if people had legit choices. Mm -hmm. You know, and now the research is coming out. Like, some of the research coming out around psilocybin, yep. magic mushrooms. Yep. It's fascinating, man. People are using it to heal, like, treatment-resistant PTSD. Yep. You know, and we've Yeah, I've been seen some very positive cool, research. Yeah. But, 40 um, years of medication and treatments, and nothing yes. helps. And they have one magic mushy session. Yeah. Cool, bro. Crazy, I've yeah. never tried mushrooms, but yeah. Bro, they're dope. Yeah. What, what's the go? Um, <laughs> okay, cool. So, mushrooms are, like, just the top bit of this huge organism that lives under the surface of the ground, right? Yeah. So it's actually the roots that is the actual organism. It yep. just pops the mushies up. Okay. So there'll be like, you know, a bunch of mushies, but they'll be coming from the same root network. Yep. And then this root network, bro, they've proven or they've discovered that it connects all the roots of the trees under the ground in healthy forests. Mm. So they've called it like a super organism. And it conducts electricity and can actually share like glucose between trees. So how are the mushrooms actually growing? I don't know. That's something you'd have to ask someone who's into fungi. Okay. But what it does is they've called it like a biological ethernet. The mind of the forest, bro. Okay. Trees legitimately use it to communicate and like share energy. So it's like all of that going in and then it pops up. Now that's know? interesting. And then someone eats it and mm. you get like, I don't know. And like the thing is that with phylanthenamines, which is a family of chemicals that are based on serotonin structurally. Yeah. Um, they interact with your brain in a really specific way. Like Very similar to serotonin. Exactly. It? It's got like one extra like molecule on it. Um, so it makes you more neuroconnective. It like, you know, allows you to think in different ways. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that it definitely opens your mind a lot to another, Literally. or extends your consciousness a Literally. little bit, is Check some of the ways it gets described. So in psychology, bro, there's this law called like Hibbs law, I think. And it's like neurons that fire together, wire together. So like, you know, language, um, tradition, pain, trauma, family cycles, they create circuits in your brain. Going to work nine to five. And the more you do it, the stronger that circuit gets. Okay, yeah, yeah. So by the time you're 80, you're stuck in the box. Yeah. You can't think outside of your... Sh you know, older, older people? Yeah, it makes sense. They have trouble picking yeah, up on new concepts. Sure. Or even younger people sometimes if they're really in their circuits. Um, but Yeah, what? just statistically, you know. Huh. Once, once, you've, once you develop a frame of the world, it's going to be harder to break that frame of the world. Well, especially if you're born before the internet. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, it's it's, yeah, it's a big difference, bro. Like, our generation is now going to unite across the species because of the internet. But yeah, so when you have this introduction of like neurochemical agent it physically allows you to break those bonds mm -hmm. and step outside yourself okay kind of examine your paradigms so so what are some of the have you had a bad a bad trip on mushrooms before? i think that like bad trips are kind of like a stereotype you can have challenging experiences okay and it's how you deal with those experiences okay so and that's kind of that's pretty like that's like a hero myth almost exactly right? yeah it's like that dude who thought he was an orange and tried to peel himself or that dude who thought he was a bird, so he tried to jump off a building. Those are all lies that have been spread specifically to Is that like, right? demonize that. Yeah, man, there was a, a, a propaganda Put a program connotation around by the way. CIA, bro, in the 60s. There was this academic article I read, and they traced all these articles back, and they all came from this one you know place that was structured by the Bureau. Yeah. So it's like there's been this hard-out misinformation campaign okay. over the last, like, 80 years, you know? Fake news. Yeah, 100%, but, like, back before people knew that was a thing when they yeah, always yeah. just believe what was on the TV and shit. So, like, that's well, what we... didn't have much of a choice, really, I hard. suppose. Like, and now we do. Yeah, yeah. And it's the difference. We have these other outlets now. I mean, it's awesome how how YouTube's developing to be one of these reliable outlets of information now. Mm. And, like, great. Wikipedia. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like, like, what is actually up, you know? Like, yeah. As long as you're backing it up. Like, you do need research behind it. Hard, but you need to look at the methods of research as well. Cause yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You so need many to, people yeah. just take the headline at. Yeah, the headline at face value. Mm. For sure. So what do you think is going to be taking up most of your time this year? <laughs> I'm going to split it up as equally as possible. Because, um, like, I definitely want to. Yeah, like, I need to do my study thing. You know what I mean? Do you have a top priority, though? Um, is study going to be your top priority? Facilitating, to facilitating, like alcohol free events on campus is okay. straight up my like passion right now yep like just making banging parties i've got like one of the bigger sound systems on the south island who's keen to help out infrasound rip rip um and a Word. bunch of people are just coming out yep. and being like yo let's do this man like cool, bro. so many people want to get involved in like a non-alcohol buzz because like i don't know man like when you see people go through it so many times you know like and then you imagine what could it be like without you know mm -hmm. some people just want to dance bro they just want to get their fucking you know they don't even want to take oh, anything yeah. and like 
I, I remember what it was like, you know, first coming to uni and you see like, you know, breathers or like people on the street and they're smashed, bro. And they're just like, blur, you know, and like, that's scary for some people. So they don't even come out, you know, they just stay in their groups. Yeah. yeah. And this way we can reach out to all those groups that feel like a little bit isolated, a little bit on the outside. Yeah. Chaos with them. Bring them in. Bring them together. Yeah, bro. Cool. <laughs> what, what's your, what's your favorite type of drug then for you? Um, well, like. If you're talking about broad families, you know, there's like amphetamines, um, like MDMA or like, um, you know, methamphetamine or whatever, MDF, I've never tried methamphetamine. Um, but then there's like opioids and depressants and like alcohol and stuff. I really like psychedelics. Okay. Um, they've shaped my life. So that's uh, yeah, LSD. LSD, magic mushrooms, yep. DMT, um, and they're based upon- Have you done DMT? A couple of times, yeah, man. And they're based upon cool. like neuronal connection. Like alcohol was literally based on destroying neurons. Um, it's like the reason that you lose your balance, That's bro. It's a depressant, isn't it? As well? Hard out, yeah. And a carcinogen, like a known, proven, heavy carcinogen. Um, whereas like psychedelics, do you know where the word psychedelic comes from? No. Psyche is to do with the mind, psychology. Okay, yeah, yeah. And delic comes from delos, which is to open. Oh, that's, is that Greek? Hard, yeah. Right, so right. it's like literally mind opening. And like, I reckon it's the way forward for our species, straight up, you know? Like we've got all these in like, moderation though. Once again, like in the proper saying, setting, so, yeah, yeah. in the proper set, there's this thing called set and setting. It's like what you go into it with, and what's around you when yeah. you go in. You You're know? not advocating for people to go out and do these psychedelics twenty four seven. I'm advocating run your life. for people to look at life differently. We're in a consumerist society, okay. so we're told through a lot of avenues that we need to be consuming stuff, we need to be smoking, drinking all the time. You know, there's like that constant need to, you know, when you got nothing to do, you just eat a thing or do a thing. You know, mm -hmm. there's that vibe. You know. But like what we need is moderation, like you say. And like that's where yoga comes into it, bro. Because you can get hooked on yoga. You know, do like three hours of yoga a day. You'll be fucking humming, guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like how many cups drink for three hours a day, you know? But if you're like focusing and you bring that that vibe, it just changes the whole buzz, man. Cool, bro. Mm. Um, yoga. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, bro. I started doing yoga um, just November last year. I mean. And I found it fucking difficult bro. bro i found out how like unflexible i am and shit ancient wounds from like five years of you know like yeah man um, well I was, i've always been quite active mm. and with my sportings and uh i did like weights and stuff and i never really stretched my muscles and i could feel it bro i could feel like tightness you know, yeah real tight joints really tight mm. muscles and in particular my hips i was just like i didn't even use i couldn't even cross my legs bro and i was just like wow this hurts like, i remember the hurts. first time i tried to like touch my toes mm -hmm. and i was like you know not even you know i was like what and now i can get my like nose onto my shins <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all yeah, the so, way and you're instructing yoga now yeah bro so like i was so just yeah just give us some of your the insights spiel, the it. yoga yeah. spiel yeah. yeah bro for sure it's a crazy story man like yoga and fire spinning are the two things and not cutting my hair the, th the pillars that I redefined myself on, you know, like okay. six years ago when I discovered all that shit. Um, and yeah, so yoga, just like the teacher at OUSA, Wayne, he's like, he was taught by the guy that was taught by one of the founders of the five schools of yoga internationally. Okay. So he's like this mythic, rare, you know, legendary yoga teacher just kind of hanging out yeah. casually, like doesn't tell <laughs> many people, <laughs> just on the download. Yeah, does, bro. It's like all this knowledge, eh, just floating. And yeah, yoga just like gives you a way to, Focus your mind and break down, you know, like your body and figure out where your tight bits are. And it just, yeah, you realize, you know, that everyone's walking around with all these tight bits all the time. And it just shows you how to open that shit up. And like for the first, you know, two months, three months, year, it's hard, bro. Because you've got to heal and like repair all that broken shit. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm in that phase. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like beatboxing or anything. You know, there's this difficulty of where your shit, oh, this sucks. This is hard. And then suddenly something switches and you're just like, this is fucking dope. Holy shit. Yeah. And, like, yeah. You just reach that bliss state, that flow state, you know? Cool. It's like cruise yeah, into it. I've struggled to find, because uh, you, you probably find, do you find yoga quite spiritual then? I do, but that's because I've had the, um, I found spirituality in a lot of avenues. Okay. So now I can kind of find it in almost anything that I participate in these okay, days. Okay. On Castle Street, bro, that shit is spiritual as fuck, man. Mm -hmm. Like, the vibe comes down like, blah. <laughs> oh, and like, and, and with yoga, man, yeah, it's like, so I've been teaching um, Michaela at Oyose, um, the recreation center. She's the manager. She's one of my good friends. She started the same time I kind of got into uni five years ago, and she's just gone up the ranks. Right. Now she's manager, you know. Um, she asked me to come and teach because she oh, knew I did man. yoga, and I was like, okay like i prayed that year I, pr I was like help me to dj and help me to teach yoga these are the two things i want to learn this year yeah. and then there's like all these opportunities came up for both bro and so i started cool. teaching glow yoga at usa mm, that's right glow yoga is so much fun so much fun bro yeah. we pack it out every time like 100 people just trip me out as well it just blew up and like we have all these paints like ultraviolet you were, you were paints. Su quite surprised with the interest or i was uh, like 
I just roll with it. I'm not really surprised at anything anymore, but I was stoked. You know, I was just like, yes, like this could have gone either way. If there's eight people, I'm fucking stoked. There's like a hundred people packing out the hole to the like limit of the fire, you know, still fucking the stoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like different mediums, you know, cause like, but surely you're more stoked when more people turn up. There's a more intense vibe. Okay. Totally. When there's all that focus, <laughs> but like sometimes, you know, I've taught like four people and that's like, you can really, you know, get into every it's quite person. intimate. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same really as a small them. scale concert. Hard. And you can like, like mess. And you can talk them through their individual things. Mm. Be like, oh, Johnny, yeah. like, you know, straighten your elbows. And like, as opposed to like, he's at the back of the hall. You know? yeah. yeah, man. Oh, Talking them more as individuals rather than a collective. Yeah. And it's like, that's trippy though with the collective. And like, so with glow yoga specifically, it's real dope. Cause like, you know, everyone comes in and there's all these like ultraviolet paints. Yeah. So everyone's just like painting each other. It's real tribal A. Like paint's a real <laughs> crazy thing in our species history, you know, like marking each other. Um, and then everyone lies down and I turn like goes into meditative state for a little bit, you know, just talking through their breathing and I turn off the normal lights and turn on the glow lights. And, the and then when everyone opens their eyes and sits up, it's just like, boom, it's, yo, so trippy. Yeah, man. Yeah. I've, I've struggled to find any spiritual value in yoga as of yet. It's a wide discipline. So there's some people that teach yoga, you know, like as a stretching discipline, as a modern sports you know, based thing because it's it's opened up, which is great. There's so it's like taken off, right? Yoga in the West. They're appealing to you know? more people now. Yeah, twenty years ago it was yeah. not a thing, bro. And nah, then suddenly it's just been like, because um, people. And feel that goes to show, like, it, mu- it must be beneficial if all these different types of disciplines are adopting it mm. as a beneficial part of life. You know, and like more so than stuff that's been around for fifty years and has been proven, like Pilates. You know, when's the last time that everyone's like, you know, that you saw the headline about? You know, Pilates is amazing. I love Pilates. Yeah. But yoga's I've never done it. hit the cultural buzz definitely a lot more. And I think it is because of that yeah, why? focus. You think it's because of the focus. Yeah, and the breathing and the meditation. You get into this bliss state, bro. Like, if you've got a proper teacher who talks you through it properly, mm-hmm. like, you get into the state of just, like, <laughs> just cruise, like, if, you know, the just fl- flow state, yeah. like, collective flow state. Yeah, okay. So, mm. when you say flow state, because mm. my, my definition of flow state in my head is kind of a state where everything, you're, like, kind of stuck in this... In, in a like a, a, a ha moment, like an epiphany moment, mm. where you kind of like don't need to think. You don't. You're not thinking necessarily. You're stuck mm. in the moment, vibing and you're just kind of yeah, yeah, vibing, I suppose. Yeah, and then, bro. so it's kind of like alignment, as though you've aligned with everything a little bit for a second. It resonates. And then yeah, normally as soon as you realize that, you kind of snap out of it. Well, a that's, bit. That, that's a that's a trick you can learn how to not do that. You know, so you just own it, and it's like this is my jam, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's the thing about self confidence and self belief. Once you own that shit, yeah, you know, this is me. I choose me, you know, and then you just stay there, and it's like you can roll with it. And like I'm in flow state, a good like, you know, even just talking, jamming, like beatboxing, like there's so oh, many. Definitely, you bro. jump into it, you know, like I'd say flow state's like probably the most common during a meaningful discussion, man. Because you just forget, you forget that it's a discussion. And you're just actually lost in the discussion. Bro, bouncing, bouncing, <laughs> bounce, bounce, bounce. So good, man. And like with fire spinning, you know, when you get to that point where you don't even have to think, and it's just like doof, 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 like space and time, bro, just aligns like you say, yeah, and you find bro. that flow, like fire spinning. So, fire spinning is like a flow art, is it? Is totally. that how you? Well, basically, there's the colloquial of the flow arts, which is. It's a real just handy term because like heaps of stuff gets you into flow state. Okay. So like, yeah. like I said, like group singing. And it's like different for yoga. every individual, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but there's pathways you can follow that are pretty like this is going to get you there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like ancient pathways of knowledge, you know. Because mm-hmm. um, like, you know, staff and like rope dart, a lot of the fire spinning practices come from like ancient fucking Shaolin like bodies of knowledge, bro. Yeah. So these are things that our species has been doing for like, you know, 40,000 years that first kind of picked up a stick and was like huh <laughs> you know like, <laughs> um, so it brings you back you know and it, it gives you that focus and when you're in that flow state it's a super like intuitive space okay so like, it's like with yoga as well once you reach a certain level there's the beginning bit where you're kind of figuring out how to move and you got to really think about all the shit and yeah, then eventually okay. you get into this point like with music you know at the start you're like this is a C this is a B and then eventually you get to the point where it's just like yeah yeah I mean, floating. yeah, totally. I think that a lot of art is like that. And just a lot of things in life in general as well. Yeah. Sports is like that as well. You uh, learn how to play. Conversations, the, you know. Conversations, I remember yeah. when I didn't know how to talk to people and I was just like, <laughs> all the time, bro. You know, everyone's been through that shit. But like, the more you do it, yeah. you just got to like, I like to call it button mashing. It's like where you just like throw shit against the wall and like, you know, in fire spin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We say it, you've got to drop it like 500 times before you get good. You know, sometimes people drop a stuff and they're like, fuck. And I'm like, yeah. It's another data point, you know. Like, yeah, you got, it's the, it's got the knowledge. It's something to get better on, you know. Hard. Something you can improve on. Failure and that's a, is good like that. Yeah, and that's a totally different approach, you know. Like people in New Zealand scared culture. of failure. I feel like sometimes. it's because of the culture, bro. This guy, you know, yeah. like there's so many denigrative like memes 
in our like Kiwi culture, you know? What do you think about memes in general? It's a fascinating concept, man. Um, it's pretty fucked up, so, eh? So like memes have been around since before like the internet meme, you know? So that it's like um, memetic. It's like a concept that just rattles through. You know, so like the drug war was a good example of a meme. It's a concept yep. that just goes viral, basically. Yep. Um, so like they're a thing that's always been part of our history since we've been integrating. Even like a tribal level, they take a concept and it just bounces through people. Um, there's like this, through the grapevine kind of. Yeah, and it's like a little bit. hard, but it's like there's a cultural undertone that people don't necessarily always pick up on, but they vibe with. Yeah. You know, so like the memes that go big, there's like truth. It's like a moment of like, there's this term that Emile Durkheim came up with in sociology collective effervescence which is a lovely okay. term let's go through that a little bit and it's when like a group spontaneously gets on the same level okay you know so yeah. we're like one so example. connectedness built in a group yeah and you can have a lot of examples like there's like um when a crowd suddenly goes into riot mode or like when um a church reaches that next level of group worship mm -hmm. or like on the street when fucking Mackie g comes on <laughs> it's like dun, 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 yeah. you know everyone <laughs> hey, just like pops it <laughs> exactly um so like that's a powerful thing and like memes are part of that so like through looking at the memes that are shared and the ones that go really big you can kind of get a sense of like grassroots cultural undertone you know it's, it's a relatability thing as well I exactly think that as humans we really crave crave to be related to mm. and it helps us somehow navigate our way through this somewhat chaotic world bro tumultuous <laughs> yeah <laughs> hard up and like you know it gives you something to identify with as a culture like as the youth there's a lot you know memes like are on the internet at least like predominantly youth based at this point yes you know like when are. older people try and get into it it's not as smooth you know some people are of course like but like you know it's like almost takes the appeal away a little bit for the younger generation yeah well. but, but it's, then it's fascinating because like there's like a bunch of mum memes that i've seen you yeah, know where yeah. all the mums get Hope on the boat in, bro. Like, it's so cool bro like <laughs> and it's just like about like baking or whatever and it's not even really necessarily a meme so much as a meme it's just like a picture about baking with like some words yeah but that shit goes viral for them you know it feels like memes definitely have a big humor element to it as well mm. which i think is awesome because people fucking love to laugh bro you gotta take the piss man in today's day and age like, you gotta take fucking, the piss you gotta be willing to be able to you know laugh at yourself as well not be too bit. serious yeah, yeah, yeah bro yeah. otherwise you're a dick you know yeah, 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 <laughs> if you yeah. come in just like <laughs> yeah it's almost yeah like that kind of like yeah, gotta stay silly yeah Oh, yeah. It's like with fire spinning, eh? Some people are like, doof, 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 you know, straight lines, and they never burn themselves. I burn myself all the time, bro. <laughs> like, I am wonky, you know? If you see me, I'm just like bouncing around, and it's like, you gotta play with it. Yeah. Wait, when did you start doing fire spinning? Six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah, man. Like how, did, how did you first get into it? What made, What was like the deciding moment? Like, okay, I'm going to do some fucking fire spinning. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Um, there were a few people. I used to hang out at the 420s all the time, bro, back in the day. Like in the middle of uni, we used to have like 50 people blazing it like on the union lawn, you know. Like, yeah, mar was marijuana like, it's, should it's be. It's pretty small now, though, yeah. eh? Um, well, yeah, people just stopped going. A lot of like kind of young kids started showing up, like 14-year-olds. Oh, they okay, wanted to yeah. blaze and shit. And like no one was willing to take charge of the situation. Mm. You know, so it all just kind of, and like a couple of older, kind of like not so mentally well people started showing showing up and like ranting about microwaves and radiation and back ah, then okay. i don't know how to deal with that shit these days i'd be able to be like blah but like back then i was like i'm not fucking looking into that yeah man for real so like after like i went there for like two or three years and it dropped off um but then yeah so like you know we played heaps of hacky yeah you know, and hacky was yeah, kind of my first intro yeah. to the like the vibes of like movement and flow and um then yeah one day we just saw a bunch of people like in the nighttime we were walking by just on the way to town and uh -huh. on the union lawn and there were all these like fucking you know, people spinning fire, just busting it out. And I was just like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, I remember the first time I saw someone do a handstand, bro. You know, and I was like, parents, you know, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, show me that shit, you know? And so I felt the same about fire spinning. And like, I just was entranced, you know, in Kiwi culture. So many, so much of the time it's about being like, you know, the tough bloke and like keeping your emotions inside Definitely, and bro. not Definitely. stepping up in front of the crowd. And then there's all these beautiful humans just like busting it out, you know, like fucking gangsters, bro. And like they all look unique and beautiful they're wearing trippy clothing you know like expressive creative expressive people and i was like dude i want to learn that shit. and then i found out there was a practice i just talked to one of them like every week six to eight in the activities hall or clubs and societies on wednesdays mm. and um yeah it's just an open practice what, what days was it again sorry wednesday oh, yeah. six to eight in the ousa activities hall and anyone can show on down folks and just people you'll just get taught and people will just walk up to you and be like do you want to learn something you know and as a community group it's awesome because it gives you that context yeah, it's not alcohol, you know, and it's a framework that you can interact with and everyone's learning shit and you can be like, how'd you do that thing? That was cool. Like I can, you know, like yep. you can actually build links through it. And what shit. are the numbers like in, in that group? Um, right now, 
on Facebook, we have like 1,200 members. Cool. But How many people are turning up on Wednesdays? Like, it depends throughout the year. So everyone's trickling back in. So last Wednesday, we had maybe like 50 people. Cool. And then tonight, we might have like 80 to 100. And then in the next few days, it's just going to explode. Ooh. Yeah, man. We get to the point where the activities hall is like, you know, you got to be real aware of the space around you because it's oh, yeah, like yeah. fucking 100 people just like busting out the complex motor movements. And like, that's the thing when you've got an atmosphere and people are trying and failing and discovering shit and popping it off together yeah. in that one room with like a beat behind it, it brings everyone to that next level way, that collective effervescence of flow state and you just start learning shit and you pick up on shit real quickly. And then like right after that, we go spin fire together. Like on the union lawn and museum lawn, we just like bust it around the corner. Like everyone like missions it out, you know? Cool. And like stomp it down for fucking like a good two hours and everyone like, then you get the chance to put it on show you know, all that shit you've been practicing. Show off what you learned, which yeah, we all love to do. And like the yeah. challenge, you know, because it's like fire. So it's like, yeah, bro. it's like you got to focus. <laughs> Fire's yeah. got a magic element to it as well, bro. It really does, bro. We've it's... always been, humans have always been like, so like in an awe state at fire. Like we'll just sit there and stare. I'll stare at fire all day, bro. Can't fire, I'll just Can you like... imagine dancing with it? And it dances with you once you, you know. <laughs> um, and like, this is the thing, bro. It's about power, you know. And fire is the thing that brought us out of the caves, man. Mm. That gave us the ability, like metallurgy, you know, like the ability to manipulate the world around us. Yeah. Like it's like a, a, um, a utilize the world. Around yeah, us. a catalyst. Yeah. You know that helps. It's like a catalyst in real, in in a chemical sense, but also in like a metaphorical sense. Like it stimulates like a cultural interaction that goes back to the birth of our species. It's a massive stepping stone. Yeah. Hi. And it's like in our genes, bro. <laughs> it's not the most important stepping stone. And it's cool because the rest of the natural world, it's terrified of fire. Mm. You show any animal yeah, and they'll hard, fucking bro. run the fuck away. But our species is like... It's Yo. weird. We are the only species <laughs> that's really owned today. You know? It's cool, yeah, man. That's probably the thing and then, and then it's you not, see not that. even like a... Because like there's obviously sea dwellers, mm. water dwellers. Mm. There's no animal that like kind of lives in fire. You know, and there's some that utilize it, like trees and shit. You know, there are certain yeah. trees that like need a wash away the dead wood. And yeah, bro, and like it helps their seeds the to burn, uh, to blossom. It's but um, like it, yeah. it's emulated in people as well. Some people see it and they're like ah, and they run away. They're like ah, fire. You know, and some people are like yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so like yeah. those people were the ones that you like that come to you. You know, and when I'm spinning fire on the street in front of like a thousand people, you know, there'll be one bro who comes up and he's like, yo, can I try? In front of everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's those bros that are come, you know, getting together, that are going to be the ones that fucking change the nature of our generation and redefine the structural systems of power that fucking dictate how we use our resources in this country and world. Yo, actually, young leaders, it's leadership culture, bro. It's like who wants to step it up? <laughs> That's the one, bro. For real. Hey, on that note, let's have a quick break, eh? Actual. Sure, right, we'll be back in a second. You got a song for us? Yeah, bro. <laughs> What is it called? The song is called Mind and Machines. Mind and Machines? Sky Tree. By Sky Tree. Yeah. Grooving to that song. Bro. That's a buzzy, bro. It's you cool, say man. he was from America? Yeah, it's just like, I just found out on SoundCloud, it's like conscious rap. Like, you know, have you got like fucking trammy rap coming out? And like, you know, everyone's about the perps and the codeine. This is specifically about LSD. So it's like Yo. LSD rap, bro. <laughs> Oh, nice, bro. What else? What other type of music have you been listening to lately? Anything oh, worth mentioning? So much jump up, bro. Suki, T S U K I. Okay. Fucking Together by Suki. So dope. Oh, Jamming it. The vibes, bro. <laughs> cool. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit more about the expansion of your fire network. Yeah, bro. Just to, like give it, give give a kind of a view of like where it's been going because it's been blowing up over the last year. It's so, like last year, you know, or a year and a half ago, um, kind of club was in decline. You know, a lot of my old bros, as I said, were getting, like, jobs and, you know, moving on and stuff, and they couldn't be as involved, which is fair, you know, they're on their own, yeah, yeah. On their own pathway. And I was like, fuck, you know, I've got to start getting amongst bros. So I was like, I've just got to, I'll go to Hyde, I'll go to Castle, and I'll just spin fire in front of it. The same thing I saw, you know, on the Union Lawn. I'll, like, I'll put it out Getting there, it out there, See yeah. who bites, bro, you know? Because, nice. like, I know people are just waiting for, like, an opportunity, you know? Because, like, in life, there's this, like, hegemonic discourse of, like, this is the way stuff is, this is the way everyone goes, the culture, you know? But then there's also yep. this other alternative pathway. Um, so I was like, I want to provide that pathway to people. Yeah. Because it fucking bro. saved me, bro. Like, I was full-on alcoholic and, like, addicted to cigarettes and all types of, you know, like, stupid behaviors. Well, not stupid, but at the time, they were just not productive, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was gaming heaps. I played Dota for sure. 10 years, man. I played so much Dota, you know? I, like, I lived in that <laughs> world. And I realized one day I was, like, living in this two-dimensional square, you know, the computer mouse pad. Yeah. And I looked at my hand and, like, moved it around in 3D space. And I was like, this is the game, bro. 
this is the controller. You know, like there, there's there's experience points and there's epic quests. Yeah. And like you get to build your own character and craft your bro. Gear. Archetypes are so real. Bro, they're so real. They're made for a reason. You know? we, that's why we love the stories. And once you engage, you know, then you can start channeling those vibes, man. And like I fully embrace, you know, the archetypes that are put onto me. Like I've got so many names. Like people identify me with, like Jesus. Like <laughs> I've been called the Wizard. You know, like yeah. Buzzy. People just call me Buzzy, bro. I love that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like, and the word Buzzy, bro, is about resonance. It's about vibes. It's yeah. about the electromagnetic level that we all exist on, you know? Yeah, well, the, if, when you, if you use Buzzy not to describe a person, it literally means with like, like Buzzy B, you know? Their wings are going zzz, yeah. Yeah, bro, it's like the bass, you know? Um, but yeah, man, so it's been fucking dope. And then, um, yeah, so I started getting amongst and just like putting it out there. And suddenly I had like people being like, yes, fucking yes can teach me you know just like a few a few good and then it grew. like getting it out there like when i first did it people were just like what the fuck you know like this is what and like that still happens but like my mind. back then no one knew about it you know yeah. so it was just like fresh bro it was so trippy and then like i didn't know how it would go at the start you know i was like maybe everyone's gonna be like who the fuck's this old cunt you know it's like if i could do with a beard coming around like and then i just was like nah i'll just roll it and people just vibed it man yeah it's so, like and then channeling those archetypes just made it that much more kind of trippy when people started projecting an image onto me i got to feel how I was putting myself out there and then like that feedback loop, you know? It's like their belief in me and what I represent then fuels how I interact with reality yeah, and okay. everyone else. Man. Cool, cool. So it's set up this like cycle, this circuit, you know, that builds into this like what is now turning into a super trippy kind of like cultural. I think you've done an awesome thing, bro. Like, and, bro, and now the club's done pumping, it, bro. It's good. Club's pumping and we're being invited to like diffs all across the country, bro. There's diff coming up synchronicity in Christchurch, like bush party. Oh, yeah, yeah, psychedelic yeah. diff so like yeah. like in the bush you know like fucking full on trippy parties what are they called that yeah man um, and then yeah it's so, like clubs blossoming and like I managed to get funding from the Ministry of Social Development okay yeah bro so nice. central government gave me a bunch of money to make practice gear and fire gear to teach Hell, yeah. kids to teach in schools so yeah. last year I was teaching in three schools bro and then, like, this year we're going to be teaching in eight schools. After one year, we're, like, wow. doubling the amount of schools. I'm working with, like, three of the largest, More like, regional trusts. Mm. And we're getting, like, funding and, like, support and, like, use of resources from all across the city to, like, roll it out. Across. Are you using fire with the kids as well? Yeah, bro. Eight-year-olds, eh? Just busting it out. Really? Like, that's the thing. Have, we... you any, have you had any um, injuries? No, none. None at all. No incidents at all. Beautiful. And the whole time I've been involved, there's been, like, three incidents. We've dealt the whole group of the whole fire spinning club, and they've all been minor and dealt with straight away. And Shit. Like, you know, people look at it and they're like, isn't fire spinning dangerous? And I'm like, do you play rugby? Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like that shit's just like, bang, you know, so much more intense. Um, fire spinning is super safe, bro. We use a safe fuel as well. Mm. Like there's some fuel that explodes straight away if you put fire near it, you know, like kerosene. If you got a big barrel of kerosene and you get fire in it, it'll explode and kill everyone. But we use Pegasol, Peg, which is like an industrial cleaning, like solvent. And it's super refined. So it's not as toxic as a lot of the other things. You know? okay. And it's like relatively benign compared to like say car exhaust. Um, and it's non explosive. So you can take a Positive. little fire toy, <laughs> put it in the barrel, it'll put out the fire toy for like oh, that's how legit it is. Oh, and shit. it also is odorless. Kerosene stings for like, you know, half a kilometer. You can smell is it. Is it expensive? Nah, it's the same price as kerosene when you get it huh. in a two hundred liter drum. It's like we finally got to the point where we found the supplier, you know. Cool. The, the national supplier. We've been like working our way up the ranks. It's like four liter containers, twenty liter containers. And that was like eight dollars a liter for twenty liters. Okay. But now it's like four dollars a liter. <laughs> so oh, yeah. half the price, That's double, good, bro. double the amount of interaction, you know? Because it used to be back in the day, Constant we'd have like movement. one container and like one person would go, and the other person would go. We'd have to stretch it out. But now it's like twelve people go, <laughs> you know, like the whole time. <laughs> yeah, bro. And it's like now we're building a system. You know, we've got these people feeding into it where we can like provide like you know events and like the summer, bro. There's like some trippy parties like Kiwi Burn. For example, can we like, burn? Yeah, bro. Where's that? Trivia's festival in New Zealand. It's like up in the North Island, um, okay. in Hunterville, just kind of like in the middle of the North Island, okay. two hours north of Wellington, and it's fucking dope, bro. So Kiwi Burn is like a decentralized festival. So there's no central sound system. There's no lineup. All they provide is the two central sculptures that get burnt at the end of the festival: the man okay. and the temple. I built the temple for two years. Did First you? year we built it, bro. How big is it? We got four hundred and twenty pallets. Oh, and we yeah. built a step pyramid, a three-story step pyramid that had a, it was hollow on the inside. It had a maze going through the inside. 
and Whoa. then like and we left markers everywhere and everyone writes stuff it's a temple that would have been a mission so they have prayers we got there a month beforehand bro it's like i gotta <laughs> dig 48 holes you know so it's just like fucking digging holes and cutting up pellets for like two weeks man Epic. it was so dope like getting real fucking ripped day eh? like mm-hmm. in the sun fucking smashing dobros just fucking digging holes <laughs> so gangster but then yeah so like um all the vibes all the dance floors all the workshops all the sound systems come from camps so you register at camp and it's just a bunch of homies pooling resources to make like dope little you know zones and shit and people bring art like there's like a nang camp you know they're just hanging yep. out fucking nangs the whole time and then there's like a yogi camp and then like you know there's just a camp the rusty joint and they just play like acdc and like fucking <laughs> like meatloaf and they're just like duh, 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 like rock it you know but then so they're camp, applying, uh, the catering to all tastes yeah exactly or like whatever you want to bring with your group yep. you know so it's just the boys you know rocking up like the straight up jump up camp like um and then like our camp's the fire camp the right. flojo the dojo of flow yo and like we like just busted out bro and like opened it up to everybody yeah and it's cool because you see the communities grow year on year so like each year everyone comes back you know that much more fucking set up what, what type of numbers are we talking at this event Two thousand. Oh yeah and they sold out in 40 hours like 40 hours eight months beforehand <laughs> they, they went on sale and book they were gone like not many people know but kiwi burn how much is it um like 180 oh yeah so like bay dreams is like three days bucks or no. Four days. Four yeah. days. Bedroom is like, you know, 350 bucks or some shit I saw for like, because you have to pay for camping and all this shit. And those places, man, like R&B as well. They're just like, they used to be like vibes, you know? But now they're just like capitalist money. I heard about that shit. It's like cattle shoots, bro. There's like a police checkpoint between the, you know, the thing and the camping and there's like dogs walking through the campground and shit. Yeah. Like, sounds like fucking terrible festival. What is that? What? I haven't been to R&B. Have you? No, nah, I've just heard about it. And like for a while, I was like, I'm going to go and bring fire spinning to the masses with a 50 person squad and teach, you know, like 5,000 people. But then I heard about the drug dogs and the police and, you know, people's bongs getting taken out of their tents. Yeah, it's quite strict thing. now. Just like, yo, it used to be BYO, eh? Exactly. And used then to... now that's not happening. Well, it's because they expanded too quickly because they're too greedy. Or is yeah. Kiwi burn. Shit, shit happened as well, Stay didn't it? Didn't like bad... Did people get hurt and stuff at Probably, R&B, I think? because they expanded too quickly. They expanded too quickly. And then, I don't know, there's a culture as well. So, like, at Kiwi Burn, people come and they're, like, set up because you have to bring all your own stuff. You have to bring all your own food, take care of all your own trash. It's a complete, like, responsibility thing. Yeah. And, like, tickets sell out eight months in advance. So if you're not organized, you don't even, you know, like, you don't even get Yeah, well, there. there's a culture behind every type of festival, I suppose, mm. as well. And then RMV is a bit more like, you know, like, people are just, like... They're maybe, getting fucked up exactly, and, and shit up. <laughs> maybe less, less, like, set up as well in their lives, because it's, like, younger people, you know? Yeah. And, like, at Kiwi Burn, you get, like, the old bros, you know, have been around for, like partying for like 30 years and they're like they got the setup you know when they roll in with their truck you yeah, know it's yeah, just yeah. like they got so much like Veterans. so many resources mm-hmm. as well like the older generation right they're the ones that have all the wealth yeah yeah uh, society, so. understandably so yeah course, right you know, oh, that's how it works mm-hmm. mate so far yeah yeah man redistribution of wealth is coming mm. um just to take a step back to um castle street <laughs> yeah bro. and you're saying like that because that was where you first kind of tried to Get this fire art Hide out and about. Yeah. yeah, I love Hyde. <laughs> and Hyde, Hyde. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Souls okay. on Castle. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and you're you saying you're a little bit worried about what people might think at the start? Mm. Well, that's just like you know, like whenever natural. You, whenever, whenever you, you go into it, yeah, I had no yeah, idea yeah, what was going to happen. For sure. Um, how much do you think that um, how much of a problem do you think uh, there is on people judging you, say for? At face value, mm. for what you look like, mm-hmm. per se. I think that's really good, and that's why I kind of like just roll with how I look. Like I believe in my genome, and it's like almost like a screening mechanism. So some people see me and they're like, "Yo, this guy is trippy." You know what I mean? And some people see me and they're like, "Ew." Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's cool because like those ones that are like, Ugh, they're the ones that I really have to like try and interact with. You know what I mean? So it's like the buzzy people I can just vibe with straight off the yeah, bat. Yeah. But those people that are really stuck in those paradigms are really easy to identify because they like project onto me straight away oh yeah you can and then tell. i get to break that projection you know okay like, so you see it as you face it as a challenge kind of yeah more. or it's like i i now know who to you know it's an opportunity or like a gift you know mm-hmm. i um, see yeah man ah cool, cool and like it happens a lot less than you think you know because i'm at the point now where i'm just like so trippy that like you know someone might see me and be like blah but then i like break dance or like spin fire and it's just like if you've got a motor cortex i can blow it at this point you know what i mean it's like yeah and it feels so good like as good as it looks bro it feels like a hundred times better man yeah like actually doing the stuff how, how long have you had your beard 
five years, man, the tips of these hairs or the ones that are lifted from, because like every now and then I get like a fire sword to the face and lose, you know, <laughs> uh, which is part of the nature, bro. It's a graph of my like passage through space and time and my hormones are the, you know, the genetic expression of my being. So like this is the living graph of the heritage of the connection to my genome that is my ancestors five years. reaching back through time to the beginning of life itself, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Five years, eh? And you here? Yeah, bro, same. It was like, I used to cut my hair and shit and like, or whatever, a few times, you know? And I was like, I always cut it because of social pressure. I was like, you know, I want to, like, I wasn't ready to embrace myself, you know? I was like, I've got to fit into this paradigm and interact. And that's because I didn't know how to interact as well, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, maybe if I look the same, we would have a shared. But now I'm like, I need to be unique. And that way you can have an even more bizarre type of, or like trippy type of yourself as an individual in society. And when that's your culture, you know, as opposed to putting yourself with everyone else. Mm -hmm. It's just when you start talking about things that other people aren't talking about. Cool. Mm. Um, so you never, did you ever get disheartened by people saying maybe offensive things nah. about you? And that's the thing, it happens so rarely. It's like, there's this one Trump voter that yeah, got I'm not, I'm not saying that time. it did happen. <laughs> no, 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 legit, legit. But I'm just saying, like, you know, I was prepared for it. And, like, when it does happen, but it's been maybe, like, a handful of times when someone's been, like, straight up to me, you know? Like... Yeah, like leave my party. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and my boy's like, where'd Joshy go? It's like, oh, don't fucking the bitch told me to leave her party. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's like, it's so much fun, man. And like I said, there was this Trump voter one night who got real irate at me, you know. And we got to have like a legit a Trump voter, right? It was just like it was so trippy just meeting someone who's was really... he from the states or? Nah, he's from New Zealand. He's okay, from yeah. Chicago, and he was just like Trump, Trump, Trump. And he's like, man, I hope Trump gets elected. And I was like, me too. And he's like, yeah. He was like, wait, why? <laughs> and I was like, because then it'll like highlight the hypocrisy and the corruption at the heart of all of the like, you know, the ways that things are going. Because like that's a symptom of pain. Mm. You know, when someone like that gets into power, it's because people are resonating with the pain that's been caused by like the, you know, the automation of all the labor, the outsourcing of the automated industries to China from America, for example. There's all these people that have been dropped, you know, by the capitalist system that are just like stagnating in these small towns and shit. Mm. They're just stuck in their bubble. So it's like that's kind of a metaphor for what's happening all across the world. You know, like the, the system's moving on not taking care of people you know and you feel it even in this country you know in some of the more rural areas you have the highest rate of youth suicide in the world you know mm, yeah New that Zealand, is bro. crazy yeah. you got some crazy problems in this country man Col like colony syndrome you know bottom of the world no one's reaching out and that's like i see a place for fire spinning in this country to like redefine our national culture and, like the way we interact as a generation like it'll it's going to be the thing that brings people together bro and like helps people to start learning and sharing and communicating Gives Interesting. Yeah, I think it should. I think it definitely could play a role. But like anything that we can do like that, you know. Exactly. But this one's so visible and so hands on, mm -hmm. and like anyone can do it if you can hold on to a stick, you know. It's and possible. Like, I tell people, like some people get on the teaching buzz when they're like teaching people on the street and they want to teach them all this stuff. I teach people like one move, yeah. and then I'm like, you dance with it. And that's when you find self-expression. Yeah. People start busting shit out, you know? They're, they're just kind of like, whoa, you know? Like, yeah, and yeah. then you meet people that do have a connection to it, like that have been practicing like rauka, like young fucking, you know, rangatira, like bouncing out there that have been playing with like taiaha or like, you know, from the islands. They're like, there's so much like knowledge in that area. And like those bros step out, you know, and suddenly you get this like cross-cultural, like collaboration of vibes where it's so cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is cool, bro. So trippy. And like, yeah, I do see it as being like a unifying factor because it's like, like I was saying, if you've got a motor cortex, you can engage, you know, you don't have to, it's like the same with alcohol. If you can buy alcohol, you can engage, that's like the pass key. You know, if you can't buy booze, you've ever been in that situation? Yeah. You've got to go to the party, sure, you've got no money and you've got no booze and you're just like, fuck, how am I going <laughs> to, you know? But with fire spinning, you just got to have a staff, bro. And then you're set, like once you got your staff, you know? I suppose the, the thing I would say though, not everyone's going to be into it though, are they? Definitely. Yeah. Um, but those that are just bounce on it and there's heaps of people that are just like yeah <laughs> you know? it's their benefit yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's so much fun bro like when you really get into it like like leveling. but that's not to say like maybe fire spinning is not for you but mm. there's always there's something out well, there for everyone well, to flow get into state, a flow state flow arts yeah, you know yeah. exactly so like yoga or meditation or singing bro freestyling the bros get on the jams you know they're just like vibing on with it like Oh. Yeah, man, just whatever, just whatever helps you get to that flow state. It's going to be different with everyone. And it's about, like, making it accessible. That's the thing. Because like, I remember, like, not having many friends and being, like, kind of isolated and not knowing how to get into, like, groups, you know? Well, you remember when you found your group? Yeah, yeah. It was just, yeah. like, whoosh. Yeah, I, I didn't find that for a while. So it's, like, making, like, those doorways open or giving people that, that opportunity. I and think it's about becoming part of a group, but then being able to step away from the group and be an individual as well, mm -hmm. like, don't get stuck in this tribalist 
group nature. You mm. know? I don't it think depends it, upon the yeah. group because each group is a different kind of culture. And I think each group has positives and negatives no matter what you're thinking. Of. Definitely. And Which is why it's important to be part of heaps. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's why you've got to remove yourself there. from a certain group so that you can go and explore mm. other groups and see um, what they're offering. And see Try yourself. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. And grow through those different exactly. contexts. And then you can like when you've got comparisons, you can look at each of those groups and be like, these are the cool bits. Yeah, you can take what you want from here, you can take what you want from there. Bro. You know, and then you grow put that one sentient, aside. Sentient entity, you know? Yeah, <laughs> As yeah. opposed to being dictated to, you're dictating how you interact. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think man. that's crucial. I think that is a crucial answer to nihilism. Now, what, what do you have a, Go on. Give us some thoughts on nihilism. Bro, in Cambodia, I was full on nihilist day. I was like, this all means nothing. Yeah. We are but a dream in the mind of Shiva. You know, this, you know, Cambodia's fucked, bro. Like, it's a crazy place. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of beauty as well. A lot of amazing things. Yeah. There's a lot of pain there, man. So I was just like, if this is the way things are, and fuck you. If, if, you know, if this is the system our elders have developed across the world to deal with this shit and the pain that they've spread through, like, colonialism, and, like, the rape and pillaging of so many peoples and lands, you know, reaching back to, like, the original wounds, you know, that split our species up mm -hmm. and is now slowly consuming our planet. It's like, why would you, you know? Why the fuck would you engage? Like, get fucked, you know? Like, like... Alcohol is perfect for that because it just takes you out, bro. Yeah, you know where the word alcohol comes from? It's Arabic, and alco is like um, less, and ghoul is soul. Okay, so it literally says like it takes Take your, your soul, soul out of it. out of your body, bro. Get out of it, cuz. Mm -hmm. And it says it opens up space for like demons <laughs> to come into your okay, body, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. when someone's blacked Position. out, seven boys having to hold back their, you know, like that shit gets fucking tribal, bro. And like, Very true. and it's tribal primal. The bro. origin of the word ghoul in English. So it's like the the image that comes to mind for me now when I see like people that are out of it. They yeah, just like okay, just yeah. Brrr, zombies, bro. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And it is that like just, yeah. you'll see it coming up in no way. Legit, like, are, it's the spiritual battle, bro. That's why I talk about psychedelics because it's the opposite of psychedelics because people are like so into it, you know, that like it's it's literally like a different direction. Like sometimes you know when I'm talking about psychedelics, people are like, is it gonna fuck me up? Because they're used to alcohol, and I'm like, nah. Because <laughs> we give you some vision, son. Like, yeah. Um, but then, the place I was going with that was nihilism. Yes, thank you. Um, so I used to be super nihilist, man. You yeah. know, and like it made me real I think depressed. We all go through there. Made me real depressed and like anxious and shit. And I was just like, there's no other answer. <laughs> yeah, it is all darkness, and yeah. there is no light. But then I saw the light one day, bro, and I realized that there is a. What future. was the point? Can you remember the exact point? I, uh, yeah, I used to, like, in Cambodia, we couldn't get any psychedelics. And I always read about them. I was like, you know, there's this thing that started a fucking counterculture revolution against capitalism and war in America in the 60s. Mm. You know, you hear about the stories of the, you know, like, Timothy Leary and, like, fucking uh -huh. all those old bros, like Terrence McKenna, the prophet, the bar prophet. Okay, you know, yeah. Um, Aldous Huxley, you know, so many amazing people were influenced by it. It created this huge cultural wave that they got brutally repressed by the government. And it's like, Hmm, maybe there's something there, bro. You know, when you read about it and you look at the systems, you're like, I wonder why they so brutally repressed this thing that is nowhere near as dangerous as alcohol. Um, and then, yeah, I just started kind of like looking for it. And then in the pharmacy, we found DXM, which is like in Robitussin. You hear about people chugging cough syrup? Yeah. So yeah. we found it pure, bro. So we could just take like, you know, huge amounts of it, like 20 doses worth of it, you know, like, <laughs> like getting there. Right? Um, and then it was real buzzy, bro. Everyone just started having, like, I have had real vivid out of body experiences yeah. where I've been like on the roof, bro. And I've been able to see, you know, everyone's heads and like what's on the TV and down the back of the couch. And like, I've been on the roof, you know, buzzy, like full bro. on. Oh, that bro. was on what? DXM, dextromethorphan. I've never heard of it. It's buzzy. Yeah. Um, so that's what we found. So that's kind of like how I got into the alternate frameworks of mine. Cause up to then I'd only had alcohol and like nicotine and like weed, you know? So this is the first really strong destabilizing yeah. okay. framework. So that was a psychedelic or? Well, it opened my mind, you know, okay. technically it's a disassociative. So it's more okay. similar to like ketamine. Um, oh yeah. The K-hole is a disassociative state. Cause if you take enough of it, it puts you into this like trance state where you have out of body experiences. I've had full on telepathy, legit. I remember I've had five telepathic hey. experiences the bro, you know, is in the chair. Give us one. Give us one. Okay, cool. So, like, one day I was at this festival. This was, like, two years ago. Um, so this is just the most recent one that's most fresh on my mind. And, like, I walked past my friend who was tripping for the first time. And I was, like, buzzing as well. And she was, like, moving her hands around. And, like, our hands generate electrical fields because we have a high density of nerve endings in our fingers. So you can literally, like, detect electrical fields with your fingers. And she, like, moved her hands like this. And I felt this wave, bro go through my body like it's hard to describe an electrical sensation you know because i was so sensitive um because i was in that neuroconnective state 
where you've got more neurotransmitter literally to conduct electricity better yeah. throughout your whole body. You know, psychedelics don't just work in your brain. Serotonin's a whole body chemical. Yeah, um, like so your brain's over your whole body as well. Totally. Much, and right? it's like all those, you know, it's a fully immersive sensation. And then, so yeah, I felt this wave go through me. I was like, yo, that was legit. So I walked up to her like, whoosh. And she was like, what the fuck? Like, and we just stood there, bro, for about 10 minutes sending electricity into each other's bodies and like interesting hard out eh? like it's a <laughs> full-on experience bro and so i was just standing there and like then we like put our fingers on each other's temples and put our foreheads together and i could feel her thoughts straight up and it was kind of like what? i could feel her being like oh my god what is this this is so trippy and i was like oh my god this is so trippy. and we bounced back and forth like oh my god oh my god and i could feel her thoughts no. legit and i could feel her feeling my thoughts and we formed this circuit bro and we just stood there eh? just like vibing like wow this is just like a full-on experience eh? and like that legitimately happened like some things are hallucinations you know and the, like you know you so it must be a hard line to draw well once you figure out how they work it's it's it, you can figure out like what category things fall into so for instance when you're on psychedelics and you focus on something like that visual signal in your brain starts to reverberate with itself so if you're looking around and stuff things won't be as trippy but if you focus on one thing it'll start to like you know visually wavy distort. Kinda. yeah hard up um that's a fucking wavy bro i love that song dollar sign um <laughs> but then like yeah so that's what a hallucination is like an illusion but then you have sensations bro like legit electrical sensations yeah that are also electrical sensations like that illusion but they they come from an exterior source like another person and like you know tai chi qigong there's so many electrical practices like reiki hono hono in maori tradition okay. there's all this yep. like you know electrical interaction it's been part of our species for like 5,000 years, you know? Mm -hmm. But like... Can't say I've partaken in them. <laughs> cool. Well, you should check them out because they're trippy, sure. man. Full on. And like, you know, Western science is only just beginning to like detect or like pick up on these like levels of interaction. Like I saw this one study, bro, and they took like master Tai Chi practitioners and they were able to measure the change in the electrical field or the magnetic field that they were generating wow. in their hands. Like that, actually, it's actually been measured now. And like, have you heard of Wim Hof? What science? Wim Hof. No. The Iceman is fascinating. You should check him out. W I M H O F F, and he's um, like he does full on cold therapy. So he's like climbed Mount Everest in like shorts or whatever, you know. And he like what? does like <laughs> minus ten degrees ice baths, and he like sits in them. And like he does like th he did a thirty meter under ice dive in the Arctic. They did two holes, and he went for like thirty meters, bro, like holding his breath the whole time, like through two holes in the ice. In the He's freezing a superman, ice. Bro. Superman. Fuck. Hard out. So, like, there's all these superhuman capabilities. How, how does he train for that shit? Just do it. He just does it like <laughs> Yeah, and he runs retreats and shit. And step step by step. step. He says it's about, the, like, the breath I wonder if that, Do you reckon that's, like, fucking some of his organs and shit? Nah, they've studied him, bro. They put him in a yeah. clinical setting, and he claimed that he could control his immune system to, like, stop it from reacting. Because a lot of immune deficiencies or issues are caused by overactive immune systems in today's society there's a lot of like sterilizer and antibiotics so your immune system is not primed so if we can figure out how to interact with our immune systems everything will change and they injected him with like a, a flu virus and they okay. observed him in a clinical setting and he didn't have an immune system reaction to it every other wow. human on the planet would have had an immune system reaction but he was able to control his immune system to not react man to that. that's that's unimaginable it's buzzy, bro. Bro. so like, <laughs> like have you heard of the lymphatic system lymph nodes nah oh i've heard that word but check it check it so in me. your body there's two circulatory systems your blood right that carries mm -hmm. oxygen and it's got a big pump yep. so that's what your heart right keeps all the blood flowing but there's a second one called your lymphatic system and it doesn't have a pump so like okay. you need to move like movement actually pumps like lymph around your body okay. and it's um the transporting mechanism for white blood cells that's ah. what lymph is, your immune system. And they used to think it stopped in the midbrain. So it was all like automatically controlled by your brain. You had no input. But then last year, they found out that there's these really tiny, subtle tendrils that extend into your forebrain. So it might be possible to consciously interact with your immune system. Wow. Like straight up. What a discovery that would be. Hard. And like, it, it, it has been. That's the thing. <laughs> and like, imagine figuring that out. We're just going to make it. Well, it's got to be more practical then i suppose well like that's the thing is about building an interface mm. with your body right so it's like you know there have been like hints for ages that we might be able to like control our genome through like you know it's environment and you know genetic influence nature and nurture so it's like potentially we could you know interact with our genes over a long period of time i always say you know like if you believe in your beard 
your beard will believe in you, bro. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, if you believe in it, you can change the way your body like works maybe, you know? And like stress, when people are in that high intensity situation, their health just goes out the whack and people are getting cancer all over the place, you know? It's yeah. like a straight up kind of cellular issue. So it's like, maybe if we had a different way of interacting and a different framework, we could actually like deal with a lot of these issues on a holistic yeah, level. Yeah, man, I mean, bro. It's like psych powers. I like the ass. theory. I like the theory, man. It's like becoming more than a theory, though, bro. Like, it's the, the indicators of that it's possible. There's indicators for sure. Yeah, man. So it's like trippy time to be alive in human history, really. And we're just getting to the point where augments are going to be a legit thing. Have you heard about the neural net? No. Nah. So do you know about Elon Musk? Yep. Yeah, bro. Like SpaceX, Tesla, you know, um, fucking the boring company. Um, he's doing a lot of amazing things for our species. And like, whenever I kind of get yeah. down, I'm like, Elon Musk. You know, I got a picture of him on my thing. That guy. <laughs> um, but he's putting a lot of you know he's really worried about artificial intelligence he's like this is gonna end our species potentially we need to slow down and check this we could do it you know like you know but we need to do it properly yeah. and so he's designing um, a neural net which basically so we have an impedance to interacting with digital technology and that's the speed of our fingers the speed of our eyes right we're still interacting in an analog manner yep. right in a physical manner with this digital technology yeah. so the neural net well, basically, oh, okay. one of the ideas for it is that um, it'll be injected you into your bloodstream and then it'll go and cross your blood-brain barrier and go to exactly the places to map your brain as a controller so you could use your thoughts to directly wow. interact with the computer. So becoming one with the digital world. Or an artificial intelligence. Yeah, that would be an artificial intelligence. Bro, so that's the, like the next level for our species is like we've generated... Oh, this... no, bro, that's kind of scary. Bro, though. the world's kind of scary. You know, there's a lot of shit going down, you know? So it's like, it's about like looking for ways forward that are novel and that like potentially could... Because otherwise, man, these machines are just going to get like, boom. You know, we're going to be like house cats, you know, yeah, for these yeah, guys. Yeah. So like if we could integrate with them, because like machines right now have a lot of trouble interacting in like physical space. Yeah. So it's like you could take... Imagine just being able to like... I've heard they've had troubles with perception quite a bit because mm. yeah, there's multiple ways to perceive the world and it's just how to interact with all the little things. It's like, And then imagine if they could jump onto our... Yeah, we're quite input. good at that. So yeah. it could be just this like... Imagine being able to have access to like the entirety of Wikipedia as your memory. Yeah. Like just... like I don't know, man. It's kind of... That's pretty scary. It's trippy, bro. But like Woo! I'm really looking forward to it because like... I'm reaching the limits of my memory, bro, when it comes to names and faces oh, and things. Fuck yeah, bro. It sucks, bro. I wish I could sucks. remember everybody, you know, but like the bro comes up that I had the mean interaction with and bonded with so strongly, you know, like a year ago. And then it's just like, I'm trying to recall. I spend like hours on Facebook drilling names, drilling flats, just so I can know who the boy, yeah. like who it is when I rock up, you know? But it's like, I'm reaching the limits, man. Like, oh. there's only so much storage. Hard, <laughs> yeah. I cannot wait to augment my biological neural processes. Oh. <laughs> Man, oh, I don't know. That kind of scares me a little bit. Bro, if you're not ready to take the step, you know, you can live a natural life and have a lovely time. I'm going to live for fucking 20,000 years and watch our species spread throughout the galaxy and fucking, like, dive into the heart of the sun one day, bro. That's my fucking... Like, Fair enough, you know? Fair enough. And, like, with life, life, you know, lengthening technology just on the cusp, bro, in the next 10 years, we're going to see radical life extension. Yeah, there's I an, think so. There was an experiment they did um, last year on, like, in mice in vitro, and they managed to reverse the mechanisms of cellular aging. What? Straight up. Hey. It's like, if you want some links to studies after this, to put in the bio. Oh, fuck, bro, hit me yeah. up. <laughs> it's like, up. the science is actual legit, hey? Like, I'm, that's one thing I'm well, really... What was, uh, what was the results then? Like... So, like, aging is a result of errors in the replication of cells. So every now and then a cell might get like a letter wrong on your DNA strand. Okay. Nothing compared to alcohol. Alcohol cut up whole chunks and yeah, just yeah, swap yeah. bits randomly because that's why you get cancer. Um, alcohol is a horrible carcinogen. But when you age just naturally, um, when your cells replicate, they, there might be a tiny error. And then over time, more errors accumulate. Your hair starts to go gray. Your skin starts to fuck out. Your organs start to fail. But what they did in these mice is reverse those cells the DNA structure of those cells back to the prime. Wow. Right? Oh, that's interesting. It's so trippy, bro. So imagine if your organs just stayed legit and your hair stayed long and you never aged. 
and you were just in your prime. And they're saying like it's a stem cell technology thing, so like they could just take a bit of your skin, cultivate. I don't fucking... know, bro. Isn't that fucking with nature a little bit though? Bro, there is no separation between nature and humans. That's an illusion. We're just an extension, a radical extension. It's like you know everything was at lovely harmony. Everything was in a baseline. You know, um, tribal communities were doing well. A whole species was in homeostasis with the planet. You know, at, at one with the world soul. But not much was going on necessarily, you know? So what's happened now is that we've had to mix that shit up. Tribes all across the world are just like, blah, you know? And like, it's been brutal, you know, painful. Like a lot of tribes have been like wiped out. A lot of knowledge is gone. But that's what change needs sometimes. Yeah. We've unleashed like, whatever, like 150 million years worth of sunlight through oil in like 300 years and through coal. It's like condensed sunlight yeah. that we've like been able to Boosh, you know, pop out there to the point where it's like literally destroying our atmosphere, you know what I mean? Which is fascinating as a species, right? To have that much power. And like that, maybe that's been what's necessary for the next level of the development of yeah, consciousness bro. on this planet, bro. I like that view. I like that point of view. I like to think that we're here to combine the best of organic and artificial processes, like, you know, like the digital technology that we're coming up with, the non organic consciousness, mm. you know? It's just a trippy concept like you've got this organic it's a real trippy concept oh, hey. so like I reckon like one of the like kind of goals or potential beauties of this particular reality is going to be the merging of that and like this is the, the, the best Man, time to be I've alive never this that. is the challenge bro this is why our generation is blessed yeah. to go through this like pain and to go through this beauty you know and to like have the opportunity yeah. to step it up and, like we get to see bro they're going to be singing legends about this time in our species history for the next 500,000 years bro you know what I mean? This is the time when the fledgling, you know, when we stepped out of the cradle and we were able to throw off the last vestiges of tribal, patriarchal, imperial, colonial bullshit that's holding back our planet. Vil. Step it up. Wow. <laughs> I'm so keen, man. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, I like, I like how much optimism you The hold. most immersive RPG. Like. <laughs> it's beautiful. So hey, what do, you, what do you think about... Uh, I just seen today that the X... Canadian Ministry of Defense dude <laughs> came out and said that the Illuminati is real. Any thoughts on the Illuminati? As a concept, like even if they're not specifically called the Illuminati, like there probably is a group that's like, you know, groups pick up There was brands, a group. They pick up symbols, you know, like the Freemasons and shit. There's always been secret societies of people that have controlled vast amounts of power. And you can understand that, you know, like in the business world, if you're like a, on top of your shit, you got a well-functioning institution, you know, you're organizing and manipulating resources and markets and cutting deals. You know, a lot of business is still real tribal. It's like, you know, like fucking cutting the deal with the bro, you know, like, and like backdoor yeah. shit, you know, you set up these systems to like get your boys on the train, you know, like employing the son of your uncle's brother, For you sure. know, which is how a lot of people get jobs. Always trying to move forward. Through those personal mm -hmm. contacts, but it's all through like personal, you know, interactions. So like there will always be groups of people that will control large amounts of power. It's just about realizing that, like, the top of the 0.01%, you know, those eight people that earn, like, $50 billion or half the world's wealth. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, now we know that. So in the past, they would have been the royals, you know, the, the elites, the, the kings yeah. and queens. But now it's, like, past that to the point where, like, no one even knows who the fuck these cunts are, you know. Yeah. They've set up the system so well. Um, and it's like, that's yeah, where the vast amount of the wealth is going, bro. 50% of the wealth of our planet. You know, people are always like, there's not enough resources for everyone. We're overpopulated. Oh, yeah. It's you like know? the Pareto distribution or whatever. It's like all the wealth's up here and then it just gravitates out. And it's like, well, it actually doesn't really. <laughs> it just mostly well, no, no, stays yeah, that's up what I mean, here. like yeah. the line is like that. That's the myth, you know, yeah, the, yeah. the neoliberal myth um, of the trickle-down effect um, we're seeing right now is just a legit, like, fucking bullshit. You know, they're just fucking shit. We live, shit we live in a competitive society for sure. Yeah. And, um... And we could take care of everyone with the resources we have. And like one of the most painful things I've been witnessing over my years in Dunedin is seeing these beautiful social groups, you know, these amazing young men and women coming into their prime, into the creative, you know, personal beauty and discovering the things they love and vibing off that shit. Yeah. And then after four years, everyone splits up all across the country and starts like working. And some of them might get sweet jobs that they love and fulfill them, but a lot of them don't and go into like shitty jobs because they have to, because they have to survive. And then after, you know, like, you know, first week, first month is legit, you know, they're like, they're still that person, they're still doing that creative shit. But like two years down the line, you know, three years, five years down the line when they've been in that job, it's just like, it just changes people and it splits up that whole vibe, you know? I hear, I hear. I suppose the argument against that is that that's part of like taking on responsibility and going through life. But what about when there's I, not I, enough opportunities? I hear, I hear. <laughs> there should definitely be enough. There should be a quality of opportunity and enough opportunities for everyone. And there's no system that organizes that right now. It's just personal. There networks. definitely isn't. There definitely isn't. Like imagine if there but was a structured um, employment program so you could know 
how many spaces there are going to be for like what degrees and what things. Like I graduated from psychology, right, mm -hmm. with eight hundred other people, you know, and the top like forty students got like research positions or got like whatever you know, yeah. have to go to the next level. But then there's like seven hundred and sixty cunts with like bachelor's of science in psychology they're like now working in pack and save yeah. or like, you know like back on their parents couch i know so many people that are living with their parents that are like super depressed just fucking around the supermarkets like it's something i've observed so it's like how do you start progressing to the next level and have that discussion how, how do you think how, how do you think how do you think we you fix that because i feel like it. it's a tough i feel like it's a really really tough one well, i think the, talking is definitely a massive part of it for sure the redistribution of wealth and, and how would how would you, how would you go about that it's a complex thing. Basically, I'd start. I'd change the tax rate, which would make us less competitive in the global sense. Um, but then also, you have to look at like cultivating like a strong national industry. Like for instance, the dairy industry is tanking, bro. Like artificial meat, artificial milk. You know that grown milk and meat are gonna be so delicious and beautiful and amazing, and they're gonna take like a tenth of the resources. Imagine if you didn't have to grow a cow from a baby cow to a big cow mm. and then have it eat all this grass and like all this methane and you know pissing into the ground. Imagine if you could just grow like prime beef by the meter cubed. Mm. So you could have this thing of just like beef and just be like, no bones, no, you know, you could spec the fat content, you could like mm -hmm. pimp it out. That's gonna completely fucking destroy a whole national industry. So what we need to start totally. doing is looking towards a future that's based upon like intelligent principles that can be invested locally so i'd really love to see the dairy industry being replaced with hemp because hemp is a bioremediator it sucks toxins out of the soil all that nitrates all those heavy metals that are still leaching it's like a 30-year period for nitrates to properly reach the groundwater so what we're seeing in our rivers now is the result of the last 30 years okay so like the brunt of the intensification of the dairy industry hasn't even hit us yet wow right <laughs> so like we need to start getting on that shit now but then 3d printing so like through technology through the automation of labor we can provide for everyone while reducing the amount of work that everyone has to do so implementing a universal basic income providing a lot of like options creative and self-development options the focus needs to go from away from developing technology or business because we're still operating on this model where we think that people have to actively participate to prove their worth to society but one person can come come up with an innovation that reshapes labor for the whole planet you know, and it's like we're based on this old school, traditional tribal village model of everyone needs to pitch in to cut the grass, to pick up the things. To, but it doesn't need to be like that anymore because like 3D printing, bro, you could 3D print a building out of hemp or like everything, you know, all this shit that's made out of fossil fuels, made out of trees. You know, they showed the other day that trees feel pain and suddenly what, what, are, what are people going to do with their time, though, if they don't have jobs to do? This is going to be the question of the future of our species, bro. What would you do? Well, I would try to use it wisely, but I feel like. The only thing, it's going to like open a lot of doors for creativity, obviously. You can still do work. In terms it of... It won't be linked to an income. What do you want to but do? But I feel like that's work. a massive incentive Reach for people. But and a lot of people might just like kind of back down. But it's the wrong type of incentive. You shouldn't be doing it just because you want to... Yeah, this, it, this it is, is the thing wrong. About a paradigm shift. It is yeah. wrong, but a lot and of this is why those banking magnates, bro, those cunts that are in it for the money, they can do that. They could, like, you know, fuck a country up, you know, at the top levels. They're the ones mm -hmm. that have, like, been pulling the rag out from under Venezuela and that, like, fucked up Brexit, you know, the Goldman Sachs boys. They're, it's about the yeah. money. You know, that's this is the symptom of a wider issue in society. Now, if we can change that focus towards asking that question, what are we here for? What do you want to do? I want to share beauty and love and get real fucking ninja. You know what I mean? I like, hear personal development social development celebration you know appreciation for reality as opposed to being locked into this like you know. the, the thing is though i think some people do want to be locked into the system definitely so you know it doesn't have to be everyone stops if you want to work in the dairy bro you know what i mean if you want to be or if you want to have a professional role there can be like you know spaces can be made for that in an intelligent society because right now like the power systems that we've got you know literally the power grid um, it's it's a dumb society. It's not a digital society. It's not a smart society. We're not linked. We're not making those analyses. Um, and the analysis with the power grid is really cool. Like Tesla, bro, um, fucking Elon Musk put this um, massive like backup battery into Queensland, I think it was, into their power okay. grid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think I he just that. gave them yeah. extra supply. You know, he's like, I'll do it in 100 days or else it'll be free. And he yeah, did it yeah, in like 80 right. or something. Um, and there nice. was an extra function he put in that they told no one about, which is that if the grid experienced like a drop it would be able to jump in you know so there was this a power system cut Come out and take out the drop uh amplified the for the drop yeah. yeah exactly so like the, the this one coal plant fucked out you know 
and then this other one was going to kick in because that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And it took like 15 seconds to respond. But by the time it responded, the Tesla grid had responded in like 0.5 seconds. Okay. So that's kind of like a metaphor for like that's cool. how we can use like digital technology to change the systems and make them more intelligent. And that, like, we can do that with jobs, you know, identify where the labor value is, what people actually want to do. But then like we need to be able to take care of everybody because like, you know, there's like kids in South Auckland and shit that are being raised on like, you know, fizzy and fish and chips. Yeah. And there's like cycles of generational pain and like nutrition deficiency and alcohol abuse that are like really in there. So it's like, how can we destabilize that framework while providing for those people while redistributing the wealth within our society? Because, you know, there's cunts in Parnell that have like $30 million yachts or whatever. So it's like, I don't know, there's a larger question about the nature of the distribution of wealth in our society that's linked intrinsically to what we want the fate of our species to be. And that's where I think a sense of shared destiny really comes in. We're here to explore this reality and participate in beautiful mm-hmm. experiences with each other, with ourselves, the exploration of inner space and outer space, the galaxy, going to Mars, bro. You know what I mean? Like we have these amazing quests mm-hmm. that we could be taking on as a, as a species, but we're still divided into these tribal groups. Yeah. Like North Korea and fucking America, bro, having this nuclear wank off, eh? It's like, my stick's bigger than yours, bro. They're like babies in a cot. You know, our species is in the toddler phase. We're just getting ready to walk. It's a very, I think it's a very beautiful idea. (laughs) I just don't, like, the the thing I see is, I feel like there's going to be complications in the practicality of it. Of course. Yeah. Good. (laughs) (laughs) If it was cut and dry, it wouldn't be worth it. You know, this is the challenge. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Forging a future for our children's children's children in 10,000 years, man. I hear you, bro. I hear you, man. (laughs) scary stuff though bro and like that's stuff finding that Intense. balance between order and chaos you know yeah man the dance you know like well oh, that's what we're here for and i mean if it was easy i always think bro like you know if i was born in the utopia i would be evil <laughs> you know what i mean like if everything was beautiful and lush and fantastic i would be the if everything was perfect there'd be nothing to do well, i yeah, think most people would be out. bro like would create chaos for the sake of having chaos you know but like we're privileged in this generation to be part of the the transition into that phase you know to have those challenges that's what we're here for. Like, I heard this thing once. That but was really with cool. the goal of what? Uh, that's the question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, everyone I mean? has different goals, eh? Yeah, yeah, man. And then it's like, but it's cool because once you start putting forward like a really aspirational shared goal, and that's kind of been tacitly what I'm doing, you know, with like a different kind of cultural vibe, you know, and a different yeah. kind of like neural vibe. Once you give people that option, you know, it can kind of people get on the train. I th- if it's authentic having a shared goal is beautiful i just think it's really hard to find one universal goal that everyone can follow you taking know? care of everybody yeah taking care of everyone can be one but just some people general, some yeah. people don't some people don't think some people think that you should be able to take care of yourself yeah but those people have been entrenched in a system that's been priming them to do that capitalism yeah. neoliberalism this is the thing like when institutional ideas take over people they're almost like viruses or like memes when people but, become memes you but know? couldn't that go both ways though in terms of like people becoming memes for sharing things with everyone and opening up all the resources and being lovely beautiful humans it is <laughs> all across the world there's groups of beautiful amazing people that are like yo we can fucking do this and like there's been this prevailing pessimism you know everyone's like shit's fucked everything's but slowly bro and then quickly the tide is turning and the beautiful intelligent people are you know taking back control i hear you i hear you and people who are taking on responsibility should be rewarded for taking on the responsibility though, right? Yeah. Well, like, it's kind of a reward in itself. I feel privileged to be in the position I'm in. And, like, I'm just vibing what I feel is authentic and, like, true. And, like, the fact that people have jumped on board with the things that, like, are true, that, that I feel are true, yeah. just validates that to me. So, like, I always say, you know, like, when people are like, dude, thank you for coming and spinning fire at our, you know, wherever. I'm like, dude, if it wasn't for you guys, I'd just be standing in a field alone, like, on the street alone, just doing it by myself, you know? It's because there's people that are vibing it that make it even more powerful for me. I hear you. I hear you, bro. Yeah. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of people that do want, feel like they deserve a reward for responsibility, especially if there's people who don't take on responsibility, you know? Mm. Well, that's the thing about consumer society, right? There's always that profit. There's always that reward. But when the reward is, you know, build up your treasures in heaven, not on earth, right? So it's like when the vibe is, when, when, when you have that symbolic metaphysical interaction, the reward is there in a way that's much more tangible than resources. You know, when you feel the truth and you see the change in people around you, that's the reward. Like, I don't, the money happens by itself, you know? Yeah. I feel, I feel you. I yeah. feel you. Get metaphysical. <laughs> <laughs> metaphysical on it. Bro, yeah, physical, physical is beautiful. So good, man. And like, that's the thing is our society is so physically based, you know, physical interaction, physical stimulation. Exactly. Yeah. And there's this whole vibe 
this whole level that's not there anymore that's coming back <laughs> yeah i think it's cool how it's coming back for sure mm. i just think that there's always going to be the other side as well though you there know? is and that's you need balance but right now that other side is like you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it's slowly coming back you know? i think it definitely is the yin and the yang, and it's cool because like the mayans and like the indians the vedic literature talked about this swing in the times you know like maybe you know as a scientist i can't say no maybe there is something to do with the like the the orientation of gravitational bodies in our solar system and like you know the alignment of the entire galaxy that changes the you know extra galactic rays that vibe into our solar atmosphere that then resonate into our sun hit our magnetosphere maybe into our own minds and into the center of the planet i'd say it comes a lot from maybe. Our culture bro <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah i'd say it probably comes from our culture though the mm. way that our culture develops but um, then how what influences that right generation to generation i mm. think it just like we learn different things from each generation exactly and each generation adopts different values and different thoughts and different patterns that they get that become the system that we operate in baby boomers right <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. right and you know then that has like a rebellious act against it because you know mm. the next generation normally rebels against that to try and poke and find some flaws in it and then try fix those flaws mm. you know and then the next generation will do the next do it again thank and god it keeps going, keeps going. yeah like, like that's how that's how we develop re refining the system right yeah exactly mm. it's trying to fix the system it's just sometimes you can try you can find a flaw and then you find try try find a solution to it and then that solution backfires i mean that happens as well you mm -hmm. know and that's part of the development or the what's the opposite development like, regression regression <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean because that's what happens we do we do we do seem to be moving forward in general though mm. well Would like you the say? pyramids you know and like the the massive mayan megapolises they're finding they were hugely complex societies and they built up all this shit and then they just went like do, 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 back into the forest it's like what happened Where'd they go? That's just so fucked up. <laughs> fucking trippy, eh? Like I cycles don't get of humanity. That shit, eh? Bro, so trippy. They're like amazing pieces of architecture, those pyramids. Like, have you, you seen know, them? Seven ton blocks that are seamlessly fitted with. It's just like, what the and, Like, they have the fucking perfect little tunnels, like, up the side. And it's and shit, like, it's when like, you look into the maths the of it, physics, it's perfectly yeah. oriented it's to the magnetic bro. north, and it's just like, fucking, those guys had some knowledge, eh? And, like, what the fuck happened there? Like, some, what of the, the fuck some of the navigators in the Pacific, bro, they would have the stars tattooed on their hands so they'd be able to hold up their hand to the horizon and orient themselves with these bodies of light according to the rotation of our planet it's just like what <laughs> so Jesus. like superhuman abilities you know like there's this illusion that spread that life is normal that life is you know you get a job you get current but then like that's a lie bro life is epic sentience is beautiful and reality is here to be interacted with on so many levels for sure some people are some people are have high levels of neuroticism though and they want that comfort and they're not as they're not as comfortable as stepping out of their comfort but zone. do you think that that's a personal trait or a cultural trait that's been i think it's a personal trait bro mm. i think I, I think it does extend from culture as well mm. and a lot of it will extend from their upbringing and or like trauma in the past trauma from the past that's that's the thing about parents. conservative versus liberal conservatively minded people are scared yeah of stuff they're like they're driven no. by fear more yeah exactly and then like that's fear i feel like it's the fundamental binary in our species you can come from a place of love and acceptance and trust or like fear and terror and pain and it's like again that's that balance thing right so like those kinds there's, there's room for both yeah I exactly think that, that they need to be able to interact but right now one is like you know this is the thing the pain and terror and hate in our world is huge mm -hmm. and like the love and sharing and openness but again we're seeing this like do, 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 do. yeah as we like fix our ancient tribal wounds as a species unite yeah Ugh, cannot wait <laughs> trippy times Trippy, trippy times. Oosh. Okay, I've uh. got one more thing for you. Go it's for just it. a little test. Uh, uh. Well, not really a test. No, I'm keen for the... <laughs> keen for the tests. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's called the higher virtue test. Mm -hmm. So it's just like pick either option A or option B. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. Okay, OCD or untidy? Untidy. Comfort or adventure? Adventure. Compassion or competition? Compassion. Harmony or honesty? Harmony. Uh, group discussion or solo discussion? Well, or one-on-one -on -one discussion? Group discussion. Purpose or pleasure? Purpose. Happy and sad or content? Happy and sad. Question or answer? Question. Power to the individual or power to the group? Group. And then final one, yes or no? Yes. Very good. Oh. Hey, thanks, Josh. Oh, thank you. It's been Josh Smith, that guy's. So good, boys. Thank you, man. Very enlightening oh. experience. Thanks, mate. Oh, um, so many chats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, I don't know who I've got next once again, but 
Yeah. Hopefully we can do this again sometime if all goes well. Just yarn and yarn and yarn. It's been great, bro. Thank you. Sweet as guys. Take care. Keep breathing.